Hello and welcome to the Villa Park podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with a match reaction or just reflections on a fantastic, fantastic away day yesterday. West Ham United won, Aston Villa two, and it was inevitable, wasn't it? It was inevitable that, that the man himself, John Duran, would get the winner and that he did. And it was a phenomenal performance all in all and just a fantastic away day. So make sure you smash that like button. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help us on the road to 5K. And let me know your thoughts in the comments on the performance, on your man of the match. And just in general, just what you're thinking ahead of the season now. Because I know we were massively excited. I know we were nervous. I know we had the anticipation of coming up this season with Champions League football, with new players to bed in and and all of that. And I guess the... the extra scrutiny that might be under Aston Villa and the extra focus and to not necessarily show that in pre-season I guess was slightly slightly concerning to some Villa fans lots of Villa fans were still saying you know look it's pre-season don't worry about it and I think yesterday really put some of those worries to bed and and some of the flowing football that we played some of the passing moves some of the running with the ball was just absolutely phenomenal the atmosphere was just brilliant with the away fans the whole day was just fantastic so talking through the game in terms of the starting lineup i said i didn't think holly watkins would start but he did uh, martinez in goal cash concert pau torres and luca dean amadou onana who will come on to a little bit later yuri tielemans John McGinn, Leon Bailey, Morgan Rogers, and Ollie Watkins. And as as I thought, I, you know, we have got lots of new sign-ins, but I didn't think many of them would start. And that's that's, I guess, a really good thing with Aston Villa. We've really built the squad. We've really really built up the options that Unai, Unai Emery's got. Because again, we'll talk about that in a second. Because the substitutions made a massive impact, but. You look at that starting eleven, and other than Amadou and Anna, everyone else is established. Everyone else knows exactly how to play. And West Ham away was always going to be a tough game. We haven't got a good record there, but you know, lots of changes there. New manager, new signings, and we just we just hit the ground running right from the off. I actually missed the goal. I can't believe it. We were trying to get in the ground, then we tried to get a drink, and all of a sudden we hear some cheering and think, "Is that the home fans?" No, it's the away fans. Try to run through, and heard that Onana scored. I've obviously caught up on the goal. Uh, great corner routine. Obviously, players blocking certain runs, trying to distract the goalkeeper. Onana ends up having a free header from about two yards out. Actually, I don't know what the goalkeeper's doing. Heads it into the bottom of the net and. I mean, you can't ask for a better debut, can you? Four minutes in and you're scoring a goal. And that was just to outline his, that was just to go on, make his performance go on and on and on. He was absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, I'll talk about him a little bit later. But obviously that set the tone and West Ham maybe have to come out and and, and try something different or that it, it puts paid to their game plan. They probably wanted to control the ball and control the game, but they had to try and, act calm but still try and push forward because they're trying to get into the game and that left spaces for us and we certainly exploited that I mean Morgan Rogers had an opportunity just picked up the ball in in those central areas and just running with the ball with such pace and with such power and with such precision and um, carried on straight through great run from Ollie Watkins and Neon Bailey to pull uh, to pull the West Ham players apart and Morgan Rogers hits the shot with his left foot keeper saved it probably could have put it a little bit more into the bottom corner but still a fantastic effort Leon Bailey has another opportunity on the break lovely ball over the top and he 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 has a great first touch steps around the goalkeeper and goes to put it into the net he has to lift it a little bit because the defender's getting onto the line and it comes off the outside of the post that's another opportunity he puts John McGinn through as well and the ball breaks to McGinn. He tries to have the shot. It gets blocked. It comes back to him and then he hits a, a curling effort with his right foot, which for all intents and purposes from where we were standing was going in, somehow manages to go wide. And you think Villa should be three or four nil up at this point. And then obviously the sucker punch mid uh, towards the end of the first half. Long ball over the top. Suchek challenges for the ball with Matty Cash. Matty Cash actually wins the ball. But tangle the legs and Suchet goes down. Referee gives the penalty. And then VAR 
goes to look at it and they don't want to get involved in too many decisions and changing decisions and go with the on-field decision and it's always going to get given unfortunately but they the, the wording of why they gave it they said he gave the he took the ball but he didn't have the intent to play the ball or something like that which is a very 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 strange decision to me nonetheless penalty and Lucas Paqueta sends Emmy Martinez the wrong way and puts it into the net for 1-1 and gets West Ham back in the game but they they certainly didn't really deserve it we obviously come out in the second half and West Ham have a little bit more purpose but again Nothing, nothing really too threatening and Villa have the opportunity to make the substitutions that really do change the game and this is where we're coming into our own. We bring on Ian Matson, we bring on Jacob Ramsey, we bring on John Duran and all three of those players combined for the goal and it was a fantastic move. Played across the back into Pau Torres, Matson makes the run, um, Pau Torres finds him and then one touch into Ramsey, one touch into John Duran, one touch finish, 79th minute goal. And that's it. Fantastic. And as we say, it was absolutely inevitable that this man would score. You couldn't write, well, you could write it because you knew it was going to happen. And away end went absolutely crazy. And yeah, just a fantastic, fantastic goal, fantastic finish. And we, this is what he can do. We know this is what he can do. We know he can come on and cause havoc. We know he can make an impact. And he's ruthless. He's probably more ruthless in his finishing than Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins is phenomenal. But you look at the the chance to goal ratio for John Duran. He is absolutely lethal when the ball's in the box. And he just hits it and it stays hit. And he knows how to finish. And it was a fantastic goal. And no more than we deserved. Obviously, West Ham huffed and puffed. And they could have had a, ch a chance right at the end. Ezri Konza blocking it on the line. And then the player putting it over the top. I think it might have been Sujek. But absolutely deserved win. And 2-1, it finished. Fantastic a win at West Ham. A win on the road. A win on the opening day. Our first, I believe, since the 2015-2016 season. I have been up and down the length and breadth of this country from Newcastle on the opening day. And I've finally seen us get a win, which was just crowned it off. It was just fantastic. And the atmosphere, the crowd was brilliant. Just everything about the whole day was just fantastic. And performances-wise, I mean, this guy was fantastic just phenomenal and he, he's going to give us a real extra element and an extra dimension to our midfield and you look at the size you looked at the way he was winning tackles you looked at the space he was allowing to be created for the likes of Yuri Tielemans and then for Morgan Rogers, who again running with the ball just brilliant just the balance to our midfield yesterday was fun was just phenomenal and the way the Onana can allow these players to play and to allow these players to flourish, I can see Morgan Rogers having a really, really good season because the, the physicality that he has for such a young age as well, he's brushing players off the ball. They're trying to tackle him and he's just holding them off and he's running with the ball and his, his decision-making is very good as well. When to shoot, when to play players in. Just brilliant. And Pau Torres, I thought, was... was I had a few concerns about him in pre-season, but today... Excellent, calm, composed, the passing ability, brilliant. Players that came on, Ramsey looked really sharp, Ian Matson looked really sharp, Philogene even um, had an impact as well when he came out, and obviously John Duran as well. So all, all around, it was just an excellent team performance. And as I said, Uno Emery has these options now on the bench to bring players on, to change moments in games, to affect games. And, and, and a lot of the time, the substitutions are almost more important than the players that are starting because they're the ones that can make a real impact and, and make real change. And that's what happened. The substitutions won the game for Aston Villa. But it was a f fantastic performance. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We'll be back later on for a full match reaction. The Lions were all match reaction tonight, but I just wanted to come on, just give a few reflections on the game and a few reflections on just what an away day it was. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep your comments flowing. Who's your man of the match? Your thoughts, your dreams, and your hopes for the season. Thank you for watching. We will see you later on tonight, half nine, Lions Raw. Be there. And as always, remember, we all follow the villa.